Greetings all and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for clicking on the video and taking the time to watch it. Today I'm going to compare two chunky vertical handles, the Anbenic RG406V and the RG405V. The main thing I want to discuss is what the differences are between these two and whether or not it would be worth upgrading. Before we get to that though, please remember my videos are based off of research and not a hands-on experience. Hopefully you still find some value from this as I do endeavor to do a thorough overview. I try my best to present you with a short, concise summary jam-packed with facts from the top reviewers on YouTube. If you enjoy it, please remember to like, subscribe and share as it really helps the channel out. With that said, let's take a look at the specs of these two units. And here, the first thing to note is that it is basically a tale of two chipsets. As the 406 has a newer and better processor than the 405, it also has double the memory of the 405 which effectively translates into better performance, but a bit more on that later. The other major differences is a screen with a high resolution which means sharper and richer looking images. The screen will really shine if you want to upscale older retro games from the Game Boy era by increasing the resolution on these and making them look amazing. It also has a slightly newer version of Android which is always good. One downside though is that the 406 is so new that there is no custom firmware for it that I'm aware of. The 405 however can accommodate the Gamma OS firmware which will give you a much better experience than the stock OS from Anbenic. Battery is the same on both units, with most reviewers praising its capacity, saying that it can achieve up to 4 hours of heavy gameplay and between 8 to 12 hours of lighter gameplay. When it comes to ergonomics and design, both devices are very similar. They both have a chunky design with protruding hand grips on the back. So they are not the most pocketable devices, but many find the grips and extra space on the units a plus. The 406V is slightly thinner though, and it has RGB lighting around the sticks. So this gives it a bit more of a flashy look. A lot of people don't care much for this, but personally I like the lighting and I enjoy the fact that you have different options to display it. Some reviewers also found that the triggers at the back are slightly better positioned compared to the 405 and therefore did not produce so many accidental presses. The 405 does have the wood grain color option though, which once again is something many would not choose, but personally I like it as I find the look of wood to be more homey and warm than the straightforward plastic look that most of these handouts have. If I went with the 406 though, I would probably choose the clean white option with those rainbow colored buttons, as it really makes the RGB lighting pop. One criticism by a reviewer that I totally agree with is that I think the 406 would have looked so much better with a bezel-less screen like the RG40XXH. And Manik, if you're listening, please take note for future releases. On to performance then. Here, both units will play any system up to PSP without a hitch. But do note that the 4x3 screen will produce large black bars for any 16x9 content. The hardware differences between these two models means that the 406 will be more capable when playing high-end systems like PS2, GameCube and 3DS. Neither of these handles can play the entire PS2 and GameCube catalog, but the 406 will play more titles more smoothly than the 405 and your games will definitely look better on the higher resolution screen. I searched up some performance benchmarks and it seems that the 406 has an average of 10 to 30% better performance than the 405. I will link some gameplay videos down below so you can have a look at how both perform with different titles. There is also a community maintained Google Sheet on the 405V that catalogues many of the games playable on it and how they perform. You can check the description for a link on that. Another noteworthy factor that will affect your experience are the analog sticks. And Manix devices are notorious for struggling with cardinal direction snapping on these, which means they are usually not as accurate as some others out there. This has seemingly been resolved with the 406V though, as most reviewers seem to agree that they are excellent. So you will probably have a better experience on the 406V if you want to do something like stream FPS shooters, as these rely heavily on those sticks for movement and aiming. The question then still remains, is it worth upgrading to the 406V if you already own a 405V? Short answer in my opinion, maybe. If you're new to the retro scene and you're looking for a powerful vertical handheld that is not too expensive, go straight for the 406V. It is worth paying the roughly $40 extra from what I have seen. If you own the 405V and want a little better performance, looks and more accurate analog sticks, then you could sell it, add in some cash and get the 406. I think the changes Anmanik have made here makes it worth that kind of effort. Personally though, at $165, I would rather add a little extra and opt for the likes of the new Retro Pocket Mini at $199, as it arguably has a slightly more powerful chipset. It is a horizontal handout though, 
So it is not really an apples to apples comparison and it is probably why I choose it as I prefer the horizontal form factor. The next vertical handle that I'm aware of that is more powerful is the upcoming INU Pocket DMG. That has much better specs overall and a premium design, but it is almost double the price at $339 on Indiegogo at the moment. Hopefully all of this gives you enough information to make a decision. That's it for this video though, as I don't want to drag this one out too long. If you want some more detail on the 405e, check out my video on it by clicking on the link on screen now. Have a nice day, and I'll catch you in the next tech update.